Hey everyone, Epic Squid Fishing here. In this video I'll be going over my complete kayak setup. I'll cover everything from where I keep the fish to how I set my anchor and even some of the custom built gear that helps me have an easier time out on the water. I hope you all get some ideas for your personal kayak and I hope you enjoy the video. So the first part of kayak fishing really you need to know is safety. So the first thing you always need to do is to put your life jacket on. It's very, very important if you get in the water, especially in the winter like it is now. Uh, you could be in the water for a couple of hours. It doesn't uh, really matter. You just need it on so you can survive. So next thing, is your radio. I have a Cobra Marine uh, VHF and I've done a course for this so I know all of the, the call signs and the, especially the Mayday call. If you get into trouble you need to know that so that's the first thing and that goes in the life jacket nice and secure so it can't come off you. If I come off the kayak I have the contact with me and I can't lose it. If it's in my pod here and I get separated from the kayak it's not going to matter so you need it on you and if the radio is doing no good you need the second thing which is the phone and I have my phone that I use in a waterproof case and that's always around my neck and it's a quick bit of contact back to shore or even the Coast Guard if the radio isn't working. So always have two. And the third one is a PLB. And now I don't actually have one of these, but it is very, very recommended in case you get it in the water and you're unable to ring anyone, you get separated from your VHF, you have the PLB on you, you click a button and there's people coming for you. So that's the first three and fourth important things that you need to know when you're first kayak fishing. It's uh, a, a bit of a, uh, you wouldn't call it crazy, but you need, to, you need to be safety conscious. So that's the first thing. Now, moving on to the next thing. If you become separated from the kayak, you'd usually be fishing, because when I'm on the kayak, I'm fishing normally. So you have the leash to the rod, which protects your rod. And if you fall off with the rod in your hand, you can just keep hanging onto the rod and you have a connection to the kayak. So this is just elastic and that's connected to the kayak on the side with a clip. And you can just pull yourself back towards the kayak and you're unable to get separated. So. That's another good use for a leash on your rod. You don't lose the rod and you don't lose contact with your kayak. So that's that. And we've got one more thing, the flag. And I'll just bring the camera over here. At the back of the kayak, you see this here? A nice high orange flag that attaches to a rail blazer at the bottom near the back where my rudder is. This is very, very important for visibility for other boats because you can be quite low to the water. This is quite a small boat in comparison to anything else. If you have this up here, you're going to be much more easily seen. Even though your kayak is yellow, you need this up higher, especially when there's a little bit of swell. You can disappear quite easily for the boaties, so that's very, very important. And I'll just set this up again, straight back to where I was. Now the final thing is if you become separated or even your anchor gets caught, because it can happen if you get pulled overboard or you fall off and you get wrapped up in your rope, because quite often I have this anchor down or I have line down. I have a knife on me in a pocket so it, I can't be separated from it because I have a knife on the boat and I have one on me. So I have a, a pocket knife 
ready in case I need to cut the line off me, in case if, if I've caught the line around my leg and there's a, a big fish trying to tow me, or uh, you've got the anchor around your leg and it's to uh, pulling you down when you're away from the kayak. So this is just another safety thing that is very important in situations that wouldn't normally happen, but they can happen, so you've got to be prepared for it. So after the safety talk, which is the most important thing, we can move on to some of the more fun stuff. Uh, I have quite a bit of custom gear that me and my dad have made for this kayak, just to make it a bit easier to fish and a bit easier to maneuver around. So the first thing is custom rod holders. So right here, if you look down, I have these rail blazers that we've set up just behind the seat. So there's the seat and my rod will go straight in there and I'll be able to fish without even needing to hold the rod. So if I put this here and I'll show you how it works, this rod right here, pop it straight into the hole if I can get it in there, there we go. Clip that up. That goes in there. Even though it's a spinning reel, it'll work fine. You close that, and if you get hook a fish while dealing with something else, it won't pull out. If you try pull on it, it won't do anything. It can't go anywhere. So that's good for especially when you're you're trying to have a bit of a relaxed day. You can put pop both of them into the the holders there, and it makes the day just a little bit easier. So the next thing is the securing clips that I talked about before. If I just take this rod out and put it back here, I have one of the custom made ones here. This is just the, the thing that we use. So it's elastic and, and it's about sort of a meter and a half. We have a loop at one end where I'll show you here. So there's the loop and it goes to the elastic through a, a a heat shrink knot so I have a knot underneath and heat shrink on the top then at the other end it's another heat shrink knot to a double and then a stainless clip so going down to the rod I can just get it down there sweet so this will this end with the the loop will go around the top of the rod and usually you put it a little bit above the reel so you have the loop just there, I'll get the camera sorted out. There we go. So the loop goes around the bottom and then you just put the elastic through, pull the other end out. It'll go through nicely, there we go. And then pull that tight and that'll be straight there. And that's your attachment. So you don't need to have a, a reel with an attachment to it, a little hole. You can put it above the reel and it won't get in the way of your reeling. So then after you've got that attached there, I'll move over here and I have this piece of elastic and grab that and move it up a little bit. There we go. The clip here, which is stainless so it doesn't get covered in salt and rust, this just clips straight to this here and it can't go anywhere. Even if I've had it before where I've lost the rod over and the, the fish, I'll have a fish on and this will pull and it won't be able to go anywhere. So that's perfect for when you're just holding onto the rod like this and you're just fishing. The reel will be able to go around if I loosen the drag off because I, I don't have a rig on or anything, but it'll be able to reel still and this up the front won't get in the way of it. If you have this out to the side, you can even hold the rod like this where the, the thing goes back. So there's a few different places you can put it. You can put it right up the front like I do at the end of the butt, or you can put it right here near the attachment to the reel. So that's that there. So that's the rod leashes and the clips. I will move on to the sounder. So I have a, right by this anchor here, I have my Raymarine Dragonfly. I'll move that anchor out of the way so you can see. I'll put this down a little bit possibly down there we go so I'll move this down and I will show you the front view of it so the kayak this is the view where my head will be I have this right here and uh, this is on the front of my 
hatch and we've made a little bracket here which is a ram which is which is a company that does um ball points and stuff like that so we have the ball point in the middle and we have a attachment to that and then if i turn that around you can see that the uh, back of the sounder clips straight into there and that sits there nicely and it doesn't move around and the back goes in there and that's that so i'll turn that around and we'll move to the other end so what we've done is in order to reduce the amount of salt getting on the sounders which is the most important part we have the sounder hatch uh, with a hole in it with some stuff to protect the wiring goes straight through the hatch which secures on to prevent the water it comes out the other side and then i'll look in the hatch here so goes in the hatch and if we can focus there i have my bracket where I have my on and off switch this here goes into my battery which we have a, a hatch right under here we've built a little bracket if I can turn it you can probably see the edge of it right here and then my transducer some people will like to have the transducer external so you can have it on the bottom but the rail marine one if you have a look here it's a very very long one so it won't fit on the bottom of the Viking slot. So all we need to do is put it in and then slide up to my end. So I put it in this hatch and then I'll tilt the camera up again down where the anchor is into this hatch. I'm able to open that hatch and pull it through. So I'll just do that now. So that's in. Hopefully I'll be able to touch it. There it is. And I will put the camera down again. So you can see, focus in on that, I'll get the anchor out of the way, zoom in there, and zoom out a little bit again, we've got the focus. So this transducer right here is a perfect fit for the little groove. So this is the groove at the bottom of the kayak that you'll see underneath it, and that just sits right there. And you don't need glue, you don't need any anything like that. All you need to do is get a bit of water and then put that underneath the sounder right there and that will work fine. So you don't even need to damage it or anything, just a little bit of salt water and it will read right through it. So the next thing that I use on the kayak is my camera mount. I have this here, I'll take it out of the mount on the rail blazer, attach my Sony camera for when I'm filming on the kayak onto the 600 model of Railblazers, the boom. So this will just pop on there and then I can put it up the front and put it into the holder. So that, that'll be able to swivel around and I can film from the front of the kayak back towards me. The next thing is all my practical gear. So I have pliers for unhooking fish, scales, for weighing them. I have this contraption from Black Magic, which is a D hooker, so I don't have to grab hold of them. This is mainly for the, the small sharks that you can catch in Hawke's Bay, like a spiny dogfish. I don't want to get them anywhere near me. They have two big spines on them, so I'll use this to grab the leader, and then I'll get that in there and unhook them without having to touch them. And then I have my rig boxes, and all of my rigs just sit in these. And I have them in their own separate bags, so I know which ones are which. And these all go into the bottom of my hatch. And to here, this just opens up. These are my sabikis, that, that goes straight in there. My dropper rigs, my smaller rods have them as well. And I have a little box, shove that in. Flies go in the front, D hooker, scales go in, and I'll get a shot of that, all of that here, and here on this camera at a moment. And one more thing is a dry bag. So when I come in through the surf, I take my sounder off, 
which is just straight out of the thing, bang, and I screw that off, take that off, secure the, the ram mount to the bait board, take that off, that comes off, that goes straight in there, camera comes off the mount, that goes in there, and then we put that straight in to the bottom of here, and that'll fold up, and then it protects everything. So this is how I sit in the kayak, sit here, this is how everything goes. My anchor is right here, I'll show you that and how this is set up. So going down here I have a breakaway onto this specific part of the anchor and when I get stuck in the rocks I can just give it a real good yank and I have it set to about 3 or 4 kilos of pressure because you can't have too much on the kayak. Otherwise you'll roll yourself, so you pull that and that'll go bang and then you can pull it out backwards without this getting caught on anything. So that's that there, that's the anchor. I'll put that to the side. So the top end, I have my winder. This has about 40 something meters of just rope on it. Nice and easy to pull up. And the other thing, I have a buoy on here. So the important thing is, I've set the anchor, so this goes over like this. And then I unwind to however deep I need. I won't do that now. I'll probably show you that at some other time. And then move my net out of the way. Come over here. And this is very important. So I'll put that over. It won't go over that side. Normally I set it on the left hand side because this is where my thing is. I set that. I let out some rope. And then clip this straight on. And then... I slide this, and I, this pulley system works really well. You go bang, and this will slide right along here, and then it'll go to the back. I fish from the front out this way, or grab a rod, this is how I fish, straight out like this, and I want my anchor behind me, so that if I hook something decent, it won't go straight round it, and I can have a chance to get off of it. So, to get off my anchor, I just unclip that, and I'm away, so. Yeah, that's that, and the buoy will sit just above where I drop the anchor, so it'll drop straight down and I feel it touch the bottom. This will clip straight to the rope, and then it'll tell me where my anchor is, and it helps it keep away from the kayak. So after that, I then just let out about 5 to 10 metres of rope, and then I have some distance between me and it. And this is how I caught my really big kingfish uh, in January, and it worked a treat. So uh, even though I had to deal with two of them, because I hooked a, a rat on the sabiki and then I had the big one take the livey, I had the chance to get that sorted and then I could ditch the anchor and get sorted without them going around it, which was lucky because they normally do. So that's that. Now we're going to go to the bait board and the steering and the net too. So the bait board here is just a nice size. The Viking, It comes standard with the Viking kayak, so this is a 400 light and this is the the bait board so I'll have my bait sitting here I'll have it right here good good chopping board I have a knife there secured as well it's bolted in and then I can just chop my bait I can have a bait here waiting to go it's all sorted so the next thing is my rod holders so I have two here one here and then another one on this side and this is very, very important. I'll bring up a fish. I'll get the fish on board. I usually get the net. This is a like, magic one. I'll scoop up the fish like this, get the fish in onto my lap, and then you gotta do something with the rod. So I grab the rod. I'll, I'll just show you what goes on. I'll bring the fish in. Net goes right here with the fish in, and then that just pops in there. And then I can release the line out and then have slack so the rod doesn't get buggered. And then I'll have the fish in. I can deal with it. So these are important. And then looking behind me, I have four at the back. So this this is very important too because I need storage space, and there's no other room for the rods to go up the front, and I can't reach. So they just go right behind my back, and they're at the perfect position for it. So the next thing, steering. I move the anchor out of the way. You look here by my feet. I have two pedals. And these are for my rudder. So right at the back, I have a rudder. You see that there? I'll move my feet right and left. And that gives me all my steering. So I don't need a paddle to steer. I can just 
paddle straight and then move a foot and I'll go this way and then I'll put that way and I'll go that way. So it's way easier to steer a long kayak like this with the pedals and that's very important for when beach launching and beach landing. So you can keep your nose in the right spot so you don't roll. So I'll just put that back again. So this is the next thing. You have all the rods at the back here. And this is the back view. You have the the soft baiting rod, the the overhead, my jigging rod, and my other one. So here is the chill pod. Now normally I'll have two rods out, so I'll have this one up at the front here in my holder, because I'm fishing, and then I'll have another one, one of these move up the front as well. So then I have some space. So this is how it works. I catch a fish, need it, and then deal to it. I put the knife in its head and then straight into here. And you can open this with an elastic clip. I have this is standard on the Viking stuff. So then it opens up. And then you've got a nice hold there. So in order to, to keep your fish good, you need to have one of these on the back of your kayak. So it keeps it out of the sun and it keeps it nice and fresh. So usually I'll put some ice in there. I have ice bottles. Salt ice does a really good job too. And I'll keep my bait right up the front and I always separate it from the fish when I, when I do that. So the fish will go straight in there and I've managed, you'll see how big it is. This is how big it is. It's not that big, so it's about probably a meter long. I got my 15 kilo kingfish in here and another one too. So it's, its tail was hanging out to about here but it actually has some really good space in there for keeping fish. So, moving on again, we'll go to the rods. So, first rod here, I'll move this out of the way, is my Sedona FE, and this is a Shimano reel, and I use it for my soft baiting and my light stuff for Gurnard on ledger rigs. So this is just a great little reel it holds about 200 meters of uh, braid on it and this braid I have on here is Inferno braid from Black Magic, which I really like using it's good strong stuff and uh, very very good feel on it so that's what I use there and the rod I have it on is the soft bait 221 from Black Magic so I'll move that back and I'll go to the other rod so this is the next one I have another set owner, but this time it's an XT and 5000, and I matched that up to the light jigging rod from Black Magic, which is a really good little rod. I haven't quite tested it yet because I haven't been out lately. The winter weather's been pretty crap so far, so I hope to be doing that soon. So this reel is a bit bigger and it can hold a bit more line. So I have about 300 meters on this one, and this is what I'm going to be using for jigging with. Um, lures for black magic mainly and some other bits and pieces and even soft baiting it's got a quite good tip on it so I think it'll do very well so that's my other rod for the light stuff it's got eight kilo fiber glide on it and I'm going to be running probably a 20 to 25 pound leader on it so I hope this one will go well it should and that's my other light setup going on to the bigger stuff. I'll bring out the, the big one last. So, this right here is my Cortez and I've had this for some a number of years now and it's been going very very well. So this has caught me a lot of fish, a lot of snapper, some kingies, some big trebs, a lot of stuff. So this rod is uh, it's 8 to 10 kilos uh, nice, nice guides on it. Some real nice, actually. I love, love the action of this rod. I'll see right here how long it is. It's about a oh, seven footer. So going on to the reel, I have a Cortez reel as well, and this is the CZ5S model, and love this because it's uh, plenty of line on it. Uh, I've got about 350 meters of. I think I've got 10 kilo, uh, not five glide. I've got. A 10 kilo inferno on this and it can take a serious beating and it's got plenty of drag uh, caught a, a nice kingfish on it a while back it was about eight eight or nine kilos and dealt to it quite well um, 
So yeah, this is the main one that I use for my bigger drop uh, rigs and stray lining too, a little bit of that, but mainly the, the four bar O hooks or the five bar O hooks on a ledger rig. And this just deals to all sorts of stuff. It's um, very, very good all rounder. So this is the, the big guns that I recently got. This one here. So this is a, a fin ore rod and reel offshore. So this is a 16 on the reel here. It holds about oh, a bit over 300 meters of braid and I have Rainbow Blade Elite on here from Black Magic and the leader I have 80 pound tough strays from Black Magic. So this is the rod and reel that I caught my much 15 kilo kingfish on earlier in the season. And it doesn't need too much, for being on the kayak, it doesn't need too much drag. So this only has, I think it's about 13 or 14 kilos of drag on the reel. That's more than enough that I need on the kayak since I'm gonna be getting towed and that's the main drag you have for stopping a fish on the kayak. So you can't lock the drag on a kingfish when you hook one. So you just need a little bit because you'll be doing most of the fighting from the weight that it's having to pull you. So this rod is quite a short one. It's a short jigging rod, and I use it mainly for live baiting, and I'm going to be starting to do some more jigging in the coming season. So I have my big hook there. That's my big 8 barrow live bait rig that I've got on there. And, yeah, this, this performed very well for me when I was fighting that kingfish. It uh, went on for 35 minutes, that big one, and I couldn't have been happier with what I was fighting on. It was nice and smooth and it got the job done so this is the rod that i'm going to be using for the bigger stuff hopefully more kingfish and maybe something even bigger like a, a, a marco or a marlin in the future possibly it's got enough line to do it so maybe so one more thing on the back here with the chill pod we've made a custom mount for it so if you see the normal chill pod would just come with this here which is the attachment to the back of the kayak, which goes through. So when you fall out in the surf, you don't lose your chill pod, but it, while being attached to it, it doesn't secure it fully. So we have made this bracket here, which is just another one, and that goes through, I'll move that up again. This goes through the handle, and then the other side comes up, well, underneath it, and then that secures it even more at the back. So that goes in there, and that can't pull out again. So, and then even again, up by the rods, we have another one. So this is the front two. We have one here that goes through this one right here, and that goes in there, and then that pulls tight, and that holds that right there. And then on the other side, we have another one, which I'll go around and I'll show you there. So, hang on, bring it down. That one right here, it goes into this one. So, overall, if I fall out in the surf, I'm not going to lose my catch, which is very good. So, moving up to the front. This is where I have the stickers. That's the Epic Good uh, sticker that I've had on there for a while. Can't believe how well it's done. It's just from a $2 shop, and it's stayed on there for probably a year now almost. Ever since the last Northern Classic, that was good. So, uh, eventually, I'm going to get some more stickers on here. Probably a couple of uh, Black Magic ones and some more Viking ones, and maybe I'll even do some personal artwork on it so I make it look even cooler. So, these tubes here are another very, very important thing. So, the main thing here is when I'm coming in the surf, and you look down there at my rods, don't mind the washing line. <laughs> um, I need to have them down because I learnt my lesson. I had a rod up when I was coming through the dumpers at Tiawonga Beach in Hawke's Bay, and I uh, got dumped and I got knocked over and my rod snapped clean in half. So I learnt for that one, and as soon as that happened, we started brainstorming, and the Taranaki guys actually do this quite often because they have quite big surf to deal with when they go out. So we saw that at the 2015 classic I think it was and we popped on these tubes so if you look here you can just grab your rod and I'll go do that now and it will go down into the tube and it'll pop out the other end so I'll just do that now that'll go in and then it'll come out the other end so I'll grab the camera again 
and I'll show you how that works. So it goes along the edge of the kite like this, and it keeps it out of the water too when you're coming in. But we're actually designing an even better one. We're going to have the tubes up the middle so I can just sit them on the bait board and keep them even further out of the water. So that's very important when you're launching on beaches with surf. So you don't lose your reel, or you don't dunk it anyway, and then on the beach you don't want to be snapping them. So that's the big deal there. And I'll show you how to transport it. So, I have these wheels that I won from the Northland Classic, like sea tugs. I would have eventually bought them if I hadn't have won them, but that was good. So, the kayak lifts up, and I'll try and do that, but it's going to be a bit hard with all the gear on it. That goes under there, and I won't really show you that, but this goes under, and I can grab the front, and then tow it along, and I can go down to the beach, and these wheels are really good for going through the sand. They're nice and soft, they're not hard, they're real soft, so that's how I can get it down there, and yeah, that's pretty much it, really. I'll probably do a bit of a, a video on all the rigs and stuff that I do after this along with the rods separate and yeah that's my full setup and um, yeah hopefully I'll be out again and able to be doing some fishing soon cheers guys